most of us have been told that we need to be strong. At the time of loss, we hear a voice telling us to be strong for the kids, to be strong for our family. What if we don't need to be strong for anyone? Welcome to Finding Words in Hard Times, the podcast. We've got stories and tools to help you be more comfortable as you help others in hard times. I'm John Swanson. I'm a hospital chaplain, a writer, a teacher. And this is episode 007, ironically called, You Don't Need to Be Strong for Anyone. I looked at the dying patient. I need to be strong for my kids, she said. I talked to the son whose mom had just died. I need to be strong for my kids, he said. One day I walked into a room after a death. My friend turned his head to hide his tears from me. Though he knew me, knew I was a chaplain, knew I knew the situation and had already been present in the room, he wanted to hide his tears. I understand modesty. I understand the privacy of tears. Too often, this hesitation to show sadness and anger and frustration reflects being told to be strong. If I had to guess, I guess that push to be strong came from people who were afraid that feeling and expressing emotions showed weakness, or people who were afraid that someone would mock them for their tears or people who were afraid to be afraid. Here are the words that I wrote in my book, This is Hard, What I Say When Loved Ones Die. You don't have to be strong. I know, you may argue with me. I need to be strong for my kids. I need to be strong for my mom. If being strong means arranging for meals for your kids or making sure that your mom is safe, that's fine. If being strong means not crying in front of your kids or your mom, or not acknowledging their grief or yours, we need to chat for a bit. For my dad's generation, being strong meant not crying which meant that we learned that even if your heart was breaking because a parent was dying, you shouldn't cry. I would love to have future generations know that feelings are great, that tears are the perfect response to deep loss, that even Jesus was willing to listen and weep and talk with his grieving friends. You can be as strong or as weak as you need to be, but you don't have to do it for anyone else. This book is called This is Hard because death and dying and loss are hard. And it's okay to acknowledge that. In fact, it's helpful to acknowledge that. And it's fine to cry. It's fine to laugh, it's fine to holler, and as long as you don't punch people or yourself, you're good. And don't worry about upsetting someone who is already aware that they are dying. We worry often about not wanting to cry in front of them. And as a result, we stay away from the room. But if that was you, you'd want to know that the people around you cared enough to miss you and to show up and express it. In these times of loss, you don't have to tough it out. Not if I'm your chaplain, anyway. Thanks for listening to Finding Words in Hard Times, the podcast, where we provide tools and stories to help you be more comfortable as you help others in hard times. Subscribe to the newsletter at thisishard.substack.com. Check the show notes for links and resources. Can share, consider sharing this podcast episode with somebody who you know needs this kind of support. And thanks so much for being a helper.